now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today with astrophysicist Hugh Ross. Thank How you for you? joining us, Hugh. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about a big question that um, some Christians might have, and that is if science is trustworthy. But before we go there, I think it's helpful for viewers and listeners to kind of know a little bit about your background, because you started first as a scientist. You were not a Christian. So can you unpack what that what that journey was like for you? Well, my parents said I was born a scientist. I was doing experiments since I was two. And uh, when I was seven, I got really interested in the stars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I knew astrophysics would be my career from the age of eight onwards. I was reading everything and get my hands on. Mm -hmm wound up uh, doing some research on uh, T. Tari type stars during my teenage years. Wow. So I uh, won the BC Science Fair, won the journal prize when I went on as an undergraduate to the university. Mm -hmm. I've always been captivated uh, by what I saw in science, and especially in the, in the, in the cosmology of the universe. So yeah, you, you've been clearly always in love with science, but you weren't a believer of any sort of faith, but you started to explore that really from a scientific method, correct? Yeah, it was my science that mm -hmm. uh, persuaded me there had to be a God. Mm -hmm. And it was my science that persuaded me it had to be the God of the Bible. And so, yeah, uh, astronomy brought me to faith in Christ. Lisa had a big part of it. Yeah, and how did you use science to come to the conclusion that the God of the Bible is the correct one? Well, uh, when you look at the universe, mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that, I mean, it's incredibly big, incredibly complex, wonderfully designed to make our existence possible. Mm -hmm. So it speaks about a designer. Uh, the beginning of the universe is what struck me first. When I was 16, I realized the universe must have a beginning. Mm -hmm. There's a beginning, there must be a beginner. And the way the universe is designed, it must be a personal beginner. Mm -hmm. And so you started kind of systematically going through the world's holy books and you use the scientific method, which I think is really interesting. What happened when you used the scientific method and you, and you were exploring the Bible? Well, looking at the universe, I could mm -hmm. see that there was harmony there mm -hmm. and consistency. Uh, there was purpose there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went through the world's holy book saying, if these books are inspired by the one that created the universe, it's going to have the same characteristics. Mm -hmm. It won't be filled with contradictions. Mm -hmm. uh, the scientific data in there will be correct, mm -hmm. historically and geographically. So I purposely looked for inconsistencies, contradictions, scientific, uh, historical, and geographical errors. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed is many of these holy books attempted to predict the future. So I says, well, if it's uh, one that created the universe, I can see that God having the power to know the future. And so I would also test uh, their predictions. Yeah, and um, one of the things that I know just about you and your, your testimony is how you looked at the creation days um, and how you, you connected that to the scientific method, particularly establishing the point of view. So can you explain what that means? Well, I was taught the scientific yeah. method when I was in grade one. We got it every single grade. Mm -hmm. So I was immersed in that uh, through my public education. Mm -hmm. But I was stunned when I picked up the Bible for the first time to give it a serious read at age 17 to see the scientific method laid out there right on the first page. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact, you know, step one of the scientific method, do not interpret and to establish the point of view or the frame of reference. Mm -hmm. Step two, don't interpret and to establish the initial conditions. And you see that in Genesis uh, 1, 2. It tells us that the point of view, the Spirit of God is hovering on the surface of the waters. Mm -hmm. That's the frame of reference from which we understand the six days. Mm -hmm. And it gives you four initial conditions. Uh, tells us that water is everywhere in the surface. It's dark everywhere in the surface. The earth is empty of life and unfit for life. And so I was rather surprised to see this in the Bible. It took me nine more years to discover why the Bible so uh, perfectly followed the scientific method. That's where the scientific method came from. So we shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, no, that's really, I think, encouraging for those scientifically minded people who are also of the Christian faith. They can 
feel hopefully affirmed that it's a good thing to explore science. Well, one thing I saw in the other holy books, uh, mm -hmm. Sandra, was an appeal to subjective testing. If this mm -hmm. feels good, you know it's true. Mm -hmm. But consistently, the Bible commands us, put everything to the test, mm -hmm. put it to a rigorous test and an objective test. That was unique to the Bible, and then it actually shows you how to put things uh, to the test. Well, when we talk about science today, and things are shifting, you know, things continue to shift. Some would say that it's because we shouldn't trust science, that the Bible is trustworthy, science is not, because it changes over time. How do you explore that from a Christian perspective and astrophysicist perspective as well? Well, probably put it in the context of Daniel 12, 4. Mm -hmm. At the time of the end, knowledge will explosively increase. And we see this particularly in the book of nature, the scientific record. We're making new discoveries at an explosive rate today, thanks to the intensity of scientific research. So science is changing in that the book of nature is getting bigger and bigger and more and more comprehensively understood. Mm -hmm. It's not that the old science has been overturned. I mean, notice that we still use Newtonian mechanics uh, to send spaceships to the distant planets. Yes, there is a relativistic correction, but it's so extremely tiny in that context, there's no need to apply it. Mm. Well, let's say you have someone who isn't scientifically minded and they are of the Christian faith. What do you do to kind of encourage them to have a little trust in the scientific enterprise and, and something that they can be excited well, about. Well, if they're a Christian, they probably mm -hmm. already have a trust in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a doctrine called perspicuity, which mm -hmm. is a fancy word for clarity, mm -hmm. that the most important messages in the Bible are clear and repeated and have always been understood by Christians for all generations. Mm -hmm. But there are large parts of the Bible where we're still making discoveries. I mean, we had the exhortation in First Peter uh, that future generations will know more than the previous generations. It's the same thing with the book of nature. Mm -hmm. Future generations know more than previous generations. But guess what? All those generations understand that the record of nature reveals a law of gravity. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's not being changed. Or as a number of scientists have said, when we do our scientific research, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So we're standing on the shoulders of people like Isaac Newton, uh, James Clark Maxwell. We still teach our students the science that they discovered. Yes, we're adding more, we're refining what they have established, but we're not overturning it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. So what would be a good resource for anyone who's curious to know why science is trustworthy and how it affirms the Christian faith. Well, a good place to go would be the Bible because the Bible <laughs> tells us yes. in Psalm uh, 19 there. <laughs> that there is a record of nature. Mm -hmm. God has given us his book. He speaks his book. It's a God that can't lie or deceive. Yeah. It can be trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, but also just read some good introductory, say freshman level college books on different disciplines of science. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see that principle laid out mm -hmm. uh, where the authors basically show you all the old science, mm -hmm. why it can be trusted, and why we can build on that to discover science we don't already know. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for that, Hugh. If you'd like to hear more from Hugh Ross, go to reasons.org and search for his blog, Today's New Reason to Believe.